I'm happy to be here at this event organized by the, the World Bank. Together, the five Nordic countries, we are, we are 27 million people. And together, we are the 10th largest economic area in the world. So each of us is important together, even more so, because we do have a bearing what happens in the world and how new ideas are being developed. We also emphasized free trade as a catalyst for achieving inclusive growth and realizing sustainable development goals, something that India is firmly committed to, something we are also firmly committed to. We also uh, launched a project, the Nordic Sustainable Solution Project in India. And the idea, as said, is to showcase and explore innovating Nordic solutions for smart, livable, and sustainable cities in India. It has meant that we have invested a fair amount of money in research and development in trial and error, but uh, finally being more or less successful. Uh, when we talk about sustainable solutions for cities, we talk about transport, we talk about waste to energy, we talk about clean water, we talk about IoT-based solutions. Companies here, all nine of them today, or eight at the moment, nine soon, are as, uh, happy to tell how they have done it and how they, how they would do it in India. Maybe something that works in Finland or in Sweden doesn't work right away like that in India, but, but uh, therefore it's good, good to, it's good to give the, the best practice and then to look what is the uh, business solution that can be, that can be worked, worked out. We'll start with the... Swedish company ABB, Mr. Vijayan, please. When we talk about you know, the, all the solutions that we want to implement, the basic uh, thing is that you know, the power system or the uh, strong and resilient power network becomes a backbone of you know, a, a successful implementation of a smart city because everything becomes dependent on a power network. So to have a strong uh, power system is, uh, is, is become a very uh, important backbone for having a successful uh, smart city. So that uh, when we say in the city scenario, the, the power system, though we have the transmission and the distribution, the distribution network becomes you know, the key element of, uh, of this uh, system. So how do we you know, um, manage this distribution network, which is you know, very difficult in, with respect to the last, last mile connectivity, the population of the network, the connectivities that is happening at the different areas. So it's very important that we see the, uh, the, the automation and the uh, digitalization happening in that area. And uh, the, uh, that pillar is also taken as part of the overall smart city implementation concept. In this particular case, prior to implementing this, you know, the smart distribution uh, system, the, um, the, the utility which was you know, serving the customers, so they were not having a system where they could identify the fault and have a self-isolation uh, you know, um, and restoration philosophies so that you know, the overall outage time of the power network comes down. While we do this automation, it's possible that you know, we can uh, have sensors along the distribution uh, sections which will identify the faults, and then there's a trigger. So we, uh, there's a centralized SCADA system which is available for the operators to you know, immediately uh, get the alerts. And then based on the, uh, based on the fault, uh, indications that are being sent along the entire topology of the network. So there's a digitalization happening of the entire distribution network, which is available on the computer system for the operator to see. When we say a city network, there are thousands of you know, the ring main units or the interconnection points which needs to be there. And how do we plan the automation of this you know, intersection points, whether we automate all the sections, it depends on a system study and then the criticality of the network. So depending on that and the phased approach in which the particular city wants to do the automation. So this can be decided and accordingly the implementation of the automation can be done. So even the uh, one of the points in the smart city, if you see, for, especially for the India, is that you know, providing 24 by 7 power to every household. And it's not only 24 by 7, it's 24 by 7 quality power to the every household. So it's important that we do this you know, automation as part of the embedded uh, you know, implementation of smart city. Thank you. Thank you very much. So then we have uh, Mr. Gupta, Blue Town from Denmark. I will be bringing two innovations from Denmark which are used in a lot of rural areas, but they are, they are valid for smart city also. First innovation is, of course, technology innovation, and it is based on Wi-Fi. Of course, Wi-Fi, is everyone knows uh, about Wi-Fi, but in India, it has a special role to play. The government of India only last month, actually, they have freed the full 
uh, ISM spectrum and they made it unlicensed, the 5 gigahertz. And that is about 750 megahertz bandwidth is available free of cost to you, be used for any device by anyone without a license, without payment of a spectrum fees. And that is why we have based our solution on the Wi-Fi. Whatever 5G is promising to do after two years, the Wi-Fi can do it today. And that is what we call everything on the tower. The meaning of everything on the tower is that you can create a hotspot anywhere, any place, whether it is rural or in the city, by making use of existing infrastructure. You just want to have to put a box there, and that is what we call everything on the tower. So it, the box does five things, actually. First of all, it is a access point, Wi-Fi access point, transmitter and receiver. Then it has a power control unit. It has a bandwidth control unit. It has triple play also. It has a BTS, that is the controller. And more than anything else, it has local cloud. It is a content service. I call it local cloud. So all these five things are there in one box. And this one box actually consumes only five watt of power. The content is in the cloud. The control is in the cloud. Then there is a lamp post, actually. The lamp post, as you know, because any structure, uh, 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 if it is there, I can convert it into a ho hotspot. The same way lamp post. The lamp post also, we have made it smart lamp post. The smart lamp post means it will, it will generate its own power also. It will have LED lamps. In addition to that, it will have Wi-Fi. It will have IoT. It will have LoRa also. So th this is how it will look actually. It can do everything. Though it used RF, ultimately Wi-Fi is a RF signal, but in future, it can also do away with the RF. So what will come on the lamp post, it will be Li-Fi. You would have heard about Li-Fi. Your LED lamp will also work as a trans receiver. It will also work as an access point. When we try to bring such innovations, so people, especially in India, I know, they will say, where is the money? And I'll go for tender and all that, and I'll buy from the lowest bidder and all that. So what we brought a new business model that is called Hotspot as a managed service. Hotspot as a managed service means that we go to the operator, not as a vendor. We go there as a partner and we tell the operator, whatever you have got, you have got backhaul, okay, let's use that. You have got a tower, let's use that. Whatever you have got, you will use that. And whatever is missing, especially this Wi-Fi hotspot is missing, controller is missing, cloud is missing. So that I will bring with my own investment. So from the Denmark, we also bring the investment. So that is the innovation. Thank you, man. Thank you, Mr. Gupta. And now we have Mr. Arora, Managing Director of Clean Motion India, please. I represent Clean Motion. Um, Clean Motion, it's a Swedish company which is commercializing electric vehicles in India. So for smart cities, we look at the solution and we find that the biggest barrier in India has been uh, electric vehicle infrastructure. Uh, it's nice to know that the government is doing something for it, but I think it's too little. Uh, we are looking at a hybrid model in smart cities where we use battery swaps. We have a battery swap currently testing at the Mall of India, uh, and we are looking at quick chargers. What we find in India is that most of the charging solutions are for large vehicles. Uh, we don't see that as a big market currently. We see that even the smart cities would need light electric vehicles. If you look at the competitive landscape in India, the TCO on electric vehicles and vehicles, you know, this whole thing about India selling cheap, I think that myth has been busted because we, when we came to India, we were told our vehicle is very expensive. But over a period of time, when we worked the TCO of the vehicle, we found it to be even cheaper than the e-rickshaws that operate on the streets. We have two primary challenges in India. One is non-availability of finance to finance vehicles from banks. And the other big challenge we have faced in India is regulatory. Um, we hear a lot of government announcements. We see a lot on the press. We attend a few government seminars. But when you go to the last mile and you ask for permission to operate your vehicles, 
is a real bottleneck. We expect that if the government really is promoting smart cities, then the government has to focus itself more on getting vehicles on the ground. Thank you. Uh, th thank you, um, uh, Mr. Arora. And now we have Mr. Dalani from Siankanod, India, Managing Director, please. We did a large deployment in, uh, for E.ON, the utility in Sweden. Uh, lots of uh, benefits uh, E.ON saw in terms of the, both in the retail side of the business as well as on the distribution uh, network side uh, with, the, with the implementation which we did. Uh, then Finland, uh, Helsinki as a whole city, the Helsinki, the capital city, the entire city has been done by us almost nine years from now. This is again one of the graphs showing quickly, uh, you know, uh, how the performance is. You can see the maximum uh, performance levels are between 99.5 and 100 percent. I mean, uh, these kind of performance levels uh, have never heard, uh, you know, by in any implementation in India so far. And so when we came to India, the nine years back, uh, uh, the first, uh, you know, utility which identified us was Startup Power Mumbai. Uh, with Larson and Tubro meters, LNT meters, we did about 15,000 meters, uh, the first project in Mumbai. We got the first very large rollout project uh, just, just last year of 120,000 meters. Initially, we got 75,000 meters in Indore city in Madhya Pradesh, the cleanest city of the India. And last three months, you are, I'm happy to uh, you know, share it with you, we have deployed over 50,000 meters in field. We deploy 500 meters a day. You know, that is one of the most successful projects in India. Our projects have been uh, very well seen by the, all, the, all the government, uh, uh, you know, authorities in India. Many utilities have seen it. Uh, we have said clearly, we have been able to prove that uh, the communication is a very important player, a very vital role. And RF mesh communication, you know, which we have brought to the country is highly reliable. It's absolutely fit for the last mile communication. But for smart city, we can play a very vital role because same RF canopy, same network, can take care of the multiple applications, so uh, street lights, healthcare, many other applications can be built, and one network can serve the you know entire smart city uh, requirements. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Dolani. And then we have uh, Mr. Sallinen, Director, Concept Design from MTele. Three years ago, we made the decision that we will enter also into telehealth, e-health, or how you name business, and we have been discussing with most of the Finnish municipalities and, and asking that what are the problems what they are facing today with the healthcare. How we do it? So basically we are using the same, same gadgets to measure bioparameters what are in use in the hospitals. The most, uh, uh, or the only difference is that we are using wireless communication between the cloud and, and gadgets. We are using uh, medical gadgets which are based on the Bluetooth communication. The gadgets uh, at, at, at home or, or wherever the measurements will take place will be connected to tablet which has the user interface for the customers. And the tablet will send the data to our cloud where the analysis will be done. And, and the professionals of, of the uh, hospitals, doctors, nurses uh, will see the status of the customers directly from the cloud. They are able to make a direct communication, video communication to the customers and telling what's going to happen and so forth, how the customer will be cured and so forth. And also at once the customer will measure something like blood pressure or, or whatsoever she or he will see from the tablet uh, the history and, and, and see how the things are going to be. And also there is a guidance for, for the patients what to do next and, and uh, which level of, of medicine should be taken and, and so forth. Thank you. Thank you. And then we have um, Mr. Das from founder and director of Sensicon, please. We need the physical infrastructure for um, urbanization. As we know, 30% of India is going to be living in the cities. Uh, there's a, that's the good part. The bad part is uh, we need a lot of resources. Building requires resources. The ugly part, resources are emitting carbon. 
a ton of concrete is a ton of carbon. If you look at the statistics, cities and buildings account for 40% of all carbon emissions, and in India, the housing sector is massive. It's about 70% of all cement consumption. If we look at that, and if we look at infrastructure, which is the next biggest, at only 13%, we all think that infrastructure is, is the big is the big fish, but here, housing, low-cost housing, um, real estate, all of those contribute much more to carbon emission and to cement consumption and to resource consumption than infrastructure. We have helped redevelop um, a bus station in, in Preston in the UK, which has reduced the weight of concrete, which has reduced transport costs, which has um, saved cement aggregates and all raw materials. Um, the best part about these is they look good, is help make the world a better place, manage resources, go low carbon, and make it visually acceptable. The key effects that it had on the common procedure or the current market is uh, it avoided the use of virgin materials. Um, it also created jobs. Uh, I think the future is here. I think we can, we should be doing it right now. We are based in the UK. We, we have our partner company in Denmark. So it's, we're here to, do, to help, to, to advise, and also to manufacture and, and help smart cities to grow bigger and better. Thank you, thanks for your time. Thank you, Mr. Das. And then we have Mr. Guha from Nave Energy, the group CEO, please. We primarily do three things in the smart city space. Uh, we, deploy, we deploy a wireless network, we design and manufacture industrial and outdoor lights along with the IoT hardware. Uh, we also get into long-term operations and maintenance contracts with the clients, with the cities, which are typically our clients. Uh, typically uh, for a period of seven plus years. Uh, as we speak, we are into long-term contracts for, with about 15 cities uh, across India. The sheer ubiquity of streetlights uh, makes it a great platform to provide a flexible and a scalable digital infrastructure. And generally, it is a good idea when the city thinks about uh, moderni modernizing its lighting system, uh, it is a good idea to make it connected so that there is incremental efficiency and it makes it a future-proof model for smarter applications. This is in a state uh, called Urissa. Uh, it's in the eastern part of India, where we are implementing about 85,000 smart LED lights, out of which uh, all of them are group controlled. We manufacture, we install, we are doing the operations and maintenance, and we are also monitoring 24-7 uh, uh, these street lights in all these five cities. This is the total number of street lights for one of the cities called Katak. And here we have about 26,000 group control lights and about 5,700 individually controlled lights. What we do here is at the group level, uh, we use our dashboards for uh, controlling a group of lights. We have uh, LoRa van gateways, uh, three of them, which are in the city, which control these individually controlled lights. It is also the only way in which each, an individual, each individual light can be monitored, that this becomes a platform for future applications. Now, in this city, when we have developed this LoRaWAN wireless network, uh, it can be a plug-and-play infrastructure in two ways. And I think every city would love an idea for a single integrated collaborative platform to, ma to manage all the smart city applications. Um, the other good part, which is very important these days, is that when you have a private network as opposed to a public network, the data is owned by the city, and it can be used for uh, other applications and to benefit the life of the, of the residents who are living there. So that's a distinct advantage as what we, are, what we are propagating as opposed to a public network system. Thank you, Mr. Guha. And then we have uh, Mr. Sarkadas from Mirasus. He's the head of India operations, please. So I represent a company called Mirasis. We, uh, we are a video-based artificial intelligent platform based out of Helsinki. We are a 21-year-old company. With, uh, a make in, we, have been, we have been doing Make in India in, in India since last year. So majors, what we have realized, the major city requirements are generally traffic management, law enforcement, accident detection, citizen safety, and security maybe tracking of criminals, cleanliness, yeah, under the search power attack, emergency services, and obviously at the end of the day, dashboards, visualization, and information sharing. That's the most important part. You have all the data. Now you need the information shown to you in a visualization platform or a dashboard. So this is the overall uh, scenario or a brief. 
So we can monitor traffic flow. That's on the left-hand side. We use our AI machines, to uh, AI algorithms to run on the videos what we have. Then we can moni even monitor the sanitization workers. We can give you real-time alerts. We can create an app for the citizen where they can uh, pick a video and say, OK, this is some anomaly found in the city, and send it across to the control room. And obviously, all the IoT device can be integrated to our platform, and uh, we can give you a single, a single integrated view. Apart from this, the new, or the new trend is artificial intelligence, because I think the artificial intelligence is the next big thing for the IT segment, or for any segment, rather. So these are the solutions what we are offering to the cities. So the smart cities are benefiting with our solutions. Uh, yeah, face recognition to track criminals. The, the, uh, already we have a criminal database under the CT, uh, CCTNS. We can uh, take the criminal database into our system and we can highlight if you're a criminal or not. Your entire city can be within one click or a one view what you can see that. You can have multiple layers in this and everything can be exported. So this is uh, what Mirasis has been doing. And thank you so much. I will be here. If you have any questions, anything, we can discuss it further. Thank you, Mr. Rasarkar. And then we have uh, Mr. Devane, senior business advisor from XLIT, India. On IoT, just remember two things. And that's what we are trying to found our company on. It's just a one-year-old company. Number one is all things are not born equal. They are extremely heterogeneous. So if you are looking at something like you are controlling a panel of an, uh, you know, cement and concrete factory, which is homogeneous, you know, there are things that are similar. When you are controlling something to do with as complex as a smart city, like the last speaker said, it is heterogeneous. From a lamp post that we have heard about, about to a concrete factory, everything, human endeavor, is to try and say that I'm going to control this using IOT, you know, as if that's the Harry Potterian kind of wand that you have in your hand. Of course it is. However, all things, when you say Internet of Things, have varied levels of technological, you know, panache, let's call it. A lamp post has been designed only to switch on and switch off. Whereas that personal computer that you have has a personal firewall. However, the lamp post and the firewall are both connected back to the same network, which goes back to the internet, which goes back to your server, which goes back to Pentagon, for as if you care. Because it's the same network, it's internet. But each one requires a slightly different way of handling communication. And that is where we come in. We say that we reduce this heterogeneity. We did a very small exercise in, back in Stockholm with 80 odd buildings with a, with a company. And, but naturally, it does give savings. It does give, in, a, in the Udaipur Palace, for example, there may be one frugal room that I go for in a, you know, kind of economic class. And there is a presidential suite which has a lot of tapestry, which has a lot of absorbent material where the energy saving potentially can be higher or lower. It depends on the construct of the room. It depends on the construct of the particular facility or establishment. So if you just take these two things in mind with all the smart city people who are sitting out here and make sure that you're designing your networks, however, you know, beautifully PowerPointed any presentation can be, there are just two things that you may want to take back home. One, look at the heterogeneity of your network. Number two, make sure that your last mile is very, very secure. And it's not easy to do. Yeah, it's not easy to do. Hence, uh, look at companies like us. We would have a video next year once we get a good funding and some orders from this August audience. And then we potentially we'll also have something nice to showcase, beginning with the letter A. Thank you so much. The audience has been very quiet and captive. I hope that's a sign of it. Um, the presentation has really covered a large space from very, it's a very IoT pace to very concrete issues, to building and uh, even vehicles. I think I, I had a very steep learning curve here. A big thank you to the panelists, big thank you to the audience. Um, I think one of you said it very well. There are these proven Nordic technologies. The choice is yours. Thank you very much. <laughs>